Is there any other board of directors? I don't want to miss you if you came in. But anyways, thank you for coming. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank uh, NSBA. They are here. They're in the house. We've got some males in the house. We have Keith and we have Reed. Uh, thank you very much for being uh, sponsors of this event. And of course, they I, I know you guys are probably going, we've heard this, Shauna, but they are my favorite sponsor because they are the wine sponsor. Um, <laughs> Surprise, surprise. And with, with that being said, wine for the evening is provided by Authentic Wine Spirits and Merchants. Patty Olson, are you in the crowd? I don't know. It's so dark. I can't see. Or maybe I'm just getting old and I can't see anyways. And Andrew Peller, Cindy Zesky, my friend. Uh, we are drinking, oh, here we go. This is a Ukrainian trying to speak Italian. El Picotio. Uh, so there's the white and the red. I obviously like red for those of you who don't know what to get me for Christmas. Um, um, so yeah, it's crisp and medium bodied uh, with the white and it has a little bit of citrus uh, tones in it. So actually I wouldn't mind probably trying it because I do like that kind of finish. And of course we got the medium bodied uh, fine juicy tannins that are in this red wine that I'm enjoying. I'm actually enjoying it really nicely today. Um, so what do we got going? Uh, we've got Wesk. Wesk uh, is going to have, this is awesome. Uh, 25th anniversary awards gala and conference. This is next year. I know we're saying like, why are you talking about next year already? But you know, it, it, it will be a sellout because it's their 25th anniversary. It is in Regina. It's on May 20th and 21st. Uh, tickets are on sale on west.ca uh, and you will save big. So by now, give yourself a Christmas present and, uh, or let's get a road trip together. We should get, shake it with a twist. We should get a bus. And we should head on, head on down to Regina and have a little, I don't know, pajama party and then uh, and a wine party sponsored by NSBA. Awesome. All right. So that's the 25th anniversary. So yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's figure this one out. Um, also, WESC has financing. So if you're interested in a loan, WESC offers loans up to 150000 Again, if you're looking at starting a new business, as we're talking about this week is Entrepreneurial Week. This is where you can go and find out more. Go to west.ca or just drop in and talk to one of their knowledgeable staff that are waiting to give you some money. Uh, and I did mention that we're not going to have Shaken in uh, December, but we are going to go back uh, to normal in January. So on January 9th, we're going to have Pam Klein, and she's the president of the Phoenix Group. So that'll be a good one to start off the year. Uh, some other sponsors I do want to denote of, uh, also is this awesome venue, which is Village Guitar and Amp. Uh, Stephanie Canfield and Dan and then their son in the back who's also they're making them work hard for uh, yeah thank you very much as you can see the nice white lights and some of the Christmas decorations so this is a great venue for you to hold some Christmas parties uh, but then again thank you so much for being uh, a great sponsor of ours for the last couple of years uh, I do have some other great sponsors to also denote um, we do have Edwards School of Business Noreen Mahoney she's the associate dean are you in the house, Noreen? I did not see you. Not no, she isn't. Okay, but thank you. We'll take your money. <laughs> All right. I know Deb is here because you can all you can't see her, but you can hear her. Uh, Deb Weger with Weger's Financial and Benefits. Thank you so much. I think her uh, her her banner's right here. Thanks, Deb, for everything you do. Uh, also, the Virtus Group, Mora. I know her. Um, I know her banner's up, but I didn't see Mora. But she does have people that are here. Wave if you're here. No, no. Okay. Someone can steal the banner afterwards. And then we have JC and Jordan with Miller Thompson. Miller Thompson, you're here, baby. Or you're hiding by the bar. And a big welcome, another guy in the crowd. Look at the guys are showing up though. All, of, all the men's sponsors are here. Warren Jackson, who's the VP of Financing and uh, Consulting. He's with BDC. They're the bank of entrepreneurship and they're the bank of money. If you need money and you want to do a startup, he's the guy in the back as well. Warren, take a big little wave back there. Thank you so much for that. All right, there is still lots of food in the back. I know you had some nibbles, but if you're gonna stick around, uh, do, there's uh, lots of food in the back. So thank you, Calories, for being our food sponsor. Uh, and with that being said, I think I've done my housekeeping duties and let's get shaking, let's get going. So who do I have with me tonight? I have Jacqueline Cook. She gave me permission to call her Jackie. Um, Jackie C, right? Jackie, well, Jackie O, Jackie C? Jackie O, let's go. Jackie O, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Jacqueline, Jackie, is the Chief Strategist Officer at Vendesta. Not sure what that title means, but we'll find out more. 
Uh, she's also the general manager of the division serving Vendesta's mid-market customer segment, which currently comprises over half of the company's revenue. Uh, most recently, Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline played a major role in Vendesta's 40 million growth funding round, which marks the single largest technology investment in the prairie since the Canadian Venture Capital Private Equity Association started collecting data in 2013. Wow, that's a lot of money. Uh, Jacqueline is an alumnus of the Next 36 Entrepreneurial Institute Canada's premier entrepreneurial leadership initiative. During the program, she co-founded and was CEO of Triumph, I was going to say Trump, Triumph, am I saying that right? Uh, yeah. Mobile Rewards, a tablet and smartphone based platform for small and medium sized businesses to customize their own loyalty rewards program. She has been a speaker at events such as, I'm going to butcher this, Tejo, Tejo Talks, sponsored by Canada's Embassy to Portugal as part of the Web Summit, TEDx, U, U of S, We Day, and represented Canada at the 2010 G8 and G20 summits the 2010 APEC Summit in Japan, and at the 2011 G20, oh my God, there's a lot of Gs and a lot of numbers, <laughs> Young Entrepreneur Summit in France. Uh, she has also been the recipient of the CBC Saskatchewan's Future 40 Under 40, a YWCA Women of Distinction Award, and serves on the board for Collabs, which if you were here last month, we had Jordan and Alicia that was here with Collabs, so you're on that board. Saskatchewan's first technology incubator, and she was recently named as Beta Kits, Canadian Women in Tech, worth watching. And she currently lives here. We are so lucky to have you living here in Saskatoon with her husband and her son. So with that being said, let's give a round of applause for Jackie. Thank you for getting to the end of that. <laughs> oh, wow. That is an impressive bio, I must say. And um, you're all of what, maybe 20-something-ish. Um, I want to hear more about this G, all these G's and all these eights and twenties, all these summit experiences that you've had in Japan and France. I mean, how did Jackie from Saskatoon get chosen to represent? Like, what was your role? What was your experience like? And how did this affect you and guided you in your journey so far? Yeah, um, it, like looking back on the experience, I, I don't think I understood the magnitude of what it was. Back then I was like, Cool, I get a free trip to Japan. This seems awesome, right? Um, but I was part of a group called Global Vision, not World Vision, but Global Vision. And the aim of the organization was to align uh, youth with business and government and sort of uh, you know, foster the cross-section between the three. And so I um, applied and was chosen to go to represent Canada at uh, the G8 Summit in Toronto, Ontario. And as part of that, we got to um, converse with the leaders. Basically, it was a, a, an adjacent summit to what the leaders were doing. So they were looking at things like maternal health, nuclear non-proliferation, food security, and the environment. And so as youth, back in the day, we had to say, if we were in charge of the world, what would we do as leaders in those same scenarios? And so it was a really cool opportunity to um, be able to get involved in some of that, um, you know, exposure to what was actually happening in the world and to be able to foster understanding with other countries as well and how youth from Germany, for example, looked at the different weighting of the world um, in their eyes. Uh, so with with that experience, I mean, obviously, it, obviously you got to learn a little bit more about presenting in front of a big group and also just even presenting in general. So how did that help you when you were doing some of these, like, entrepreneurial TED Talks that you were doing and We Day and all these other sort of major sort of presentations uh, as well. Yeah, I think it has to do with, and maybe it's translated to in some of the entrepreneurs in the, in the room is the more passionate you are, I think people can taste that and feel that in your pitch. Um, they can smell phoniness from a mile away. And so, you know, getting to the root of cause of some of these issues and really identifying with the impact that here we are in literally the next room beside Obama at the time, Stephen Harper and, you know, Angela Merkel and all that. And they were looking at the same issues and you realize the impact of, wow, these decisions are actually going to have formative impact on the globe over the next, you know, year, 10 years, 20 years and stuff. So I think I'm um, really digging into and as it relates to sort of entrepreneurship in our day to day world, not treating presentations as just a rehearsal of regurgitation of words, but really a, a platform to communicate something you're super passionate about, um, 
even if your words aren't quite the perfect words to use, yeah. um, people feel it when you're kind of passionate about it. Right. Yeah. So uh, when we first met, was you were just a, a recent graduate of uh, U of S, I believe. Um, you were actually on Shaken, so you were an alumni. You were one of the second or third interviews that I did. It was yourself and Stephanie, and it was these young little entrepreneurs that had just graduated from U of S, and you were, you know, starting. Uh, starting up with a, a company, uh, a tech company, a video company, I think, if I remember. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you were these young entrepreneurs in the tech industry, and you were doing this before it was even now cool, because that's the new word now, everybody in tech, and especially females in tech is, like, super cool. But looking back, like, what challenges did you face while pursuing that profession and those interests right, right here in Saskatoon? Oh, man. I, I don't think I knew how naive I was at the time, which turned out to be a huge asset. Like, I think the more you overanalyze things, it's, it's funny. Okay, so a little bit of background. So we met um, because I had started something called Thread Media, and it was supposed to be this um, localized YouTube, basically. So imagine there was a website to see what was coming up in local events and then to watch really cool clips of things like Shake with a Twist or things around your city. We're, this is going to be a trillion dollar idea, we're going to create citizen journalists all over the world, whatever. At the time we were just full of piss and vinegar and the coolest part was you had this fake media badge that got you into all the best events around the city, <laughs> right? So that's, but at the time we were just like, we were so driven on this mission and I, I think you know some of the obstacles was everything that people face today it's you know show me show me the economics of your idea and show me the how is this going to pay back and how are you going to monetize your users and and we just kept like yeah that's cool let's just keep doing it and building an audience and whatnot and i think what i realized at the time was um it's not so much that you're you're doing exactly what you should because you'll never know what the perfect path is but that you're moving forward and um, I think with what Thread was, it was a stepping stone to understand um, really how, how marketing worked and it allowed me to move on to the next stage, which was the next 36. And so nothing, as long as you're moving forward, nothing is really a setback. It's just a lesson that you need to take on with you so you don't make the mistake when you do it again in your next venture. Yeah. I know that I would, like I went on, I was reading like what's beta kits, kits? This is a... Uh... Where you're the, the 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 tech woman to watch. So I went on there and, and I was reading like some of the the ladies to watch, and one of them said like you know basically that what typically is never really your first startup that is what is going to be what you're known for or what you're going to succeed at, but it's definitely something that's going to help you down the road in the journey uh, to learn from and get you to where you are going to find that path of of, um, of success. So absolutely. And the faster you learn, the better it is. Uh, and it's not. Do you have better. any of those media tags that can get me in? Like, <laughs> it's like a fake ID. The like, Junos are yeah, coming up in March, right. you know. So. I kid you not. We like walked in. We're like, yeah, we're with Red Media. And they're like, okay, come this way. Don't ask us. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Oh, funny. But then you meet people, and you're like, network. You guys know. You're here you're networking, obviously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, I, I did allude to the fact that you your your title is, I love when people make up these, I'm not saying it's made up, yeah, so I never, sure, I'm not yeah. going that way, but I love <laughs> these titles that are non-traditional, yeah. you know, like I'm the director of fun, um, you know, and so you're the chief uh, strategist officer at Vendesta, uh, but I'm sure that title means a lot. Uh, in regards to what it, I, I, I think it encompasses a number of things because you also said you're the general manager of of customer service that's you know bringing in the most revenue yada yada. <laughs> so, but you just recently announced um, that Vendesta has raised forty million dollars in new venture capital funding here in the prairies, uh, which is like the first of its kind or the most since two thousand and thirteen, is what you said. That just blows my mind, um, not because of the number and not because that it's here in Saskatoon, but also you were doing this while you just had a baby boy. Like you just had a new baby and you're doing this. So share the experience of all that and what's going on. Sure. Maybe I'll start with the first question, which WTF is CSO. 
what is the chief strategy officer? Um, and the funny thing is, like, the number of times I've searched that in Google is, like, alarming, right? Like, what should I be doing? What is this thing that... Basically, what I do at Vendasta is catch all the garbage before it falls on the ground. So, like, the things that fall between the cracks that aren't chief technology officer worthy or CEO worthy or chief finance, like someone's got to put together a grant for a $3.6 million round of financing from the government. Whose desk does, Jackie, you look free, you know? So it's, it's a lot of like yeah, random There's a lot. So everything. But I, I bet you a lot of the women in this room are just used to that. And we just happened to call it a chief strategy officer, but it was really like all the stuff that fell through the cracks. And so, um, and I'd like to ask, like my, my colleagues here, like, what the heck, what do I do? But a, a lot of a lot of what my focus on right now is, um, so we have what we call, and for those who are entrepreneurs, um, one of the things that I wish I knew really early on as our business scaled was how to organize the company around aligning toward your strategies or your objectives. And when we were really small, we had functional leads. So there was someone, and even in my division, we have the head of product, we have the head of marketing, the head of sales. Well, as you get 20 salespeople or 20 product managers or 20, you need to create more cross-functional groups that are aligned towards uh, you know, a common goal rather than having all of the designers design and all of the engineers and all of the marketers and whatnot. And so aligning your organization towards some of those objectives that's really what I do at Vendasta is work a lot on organizational design, figuring out what our key objectives are with the company and making sure our org structure really creates the best vehicle in order to, to sprint toward that. And in a tech company, it's super fast moving. So we reorg probably, you know, Carly's only been here for a couple of years. She's probably gone through like eight reorgs since she's been here, but it's really to, to move. Uh, quickly. So um, anyways, that's what a CSO does, I mm -hmm. guess, in our company. Other companies, not so much. Um, the fundraise was one of those things that it was like, we don't have a CFO at this time. Vendasa, we kind of went without a CFO for about a year and a half. And because I, I guess, knew numbers in the business a little bit, and I was excited about learning and had understood what raising capital looked like at a seed in a series A round um, was like, I think it's really just the same. You just times it by 20 and so on and so forth. So I was, I guess, just right time, right place kind of thing. Mm. Well, 40 million, that, I mean, that number, that grabs everyone's interest and it has obviously in the tech industry, just in the industry in general, being able to raise that amount of money. Um, and so, so as the chief strategist officer, uh, what I would like you to speak to right now is then what are you going to spend this money on and what does that mean to Saskatoon and then in particular the industry mm -hmm. and then again back to your role what are you what, what is your involvement in spending the 40 million dollars yeah so um, we can all buy cars I just found that out mm -hmm. we can't all just go get our houses done and buy cars um, no, it's really remarkable that like $40 million sounds like a ton of money. It is a ton of money, but then when you break it down into the spreadsheets and all the individual cells, it's like, how did that go so quickly? Oh my God, like, poor Carly's putting together a budget for the new building and we're saying like, no, you better go to the garage sale for that coffee table because we can't. No, but we're, very, we're a very capital efficient organization and compared to other companies in the States and in other areas of Canada, who have raised a hundred million dollars to get to where we are. Vendasta is very, very capital efficient because we have to be. We're in the Canadian prairies and the number of times investors, literally, we got through the presentation, they're like, wow, I love this. The market's huge. You've got great traction, great team. I love your customer profile. <laughs> we will get an email like 10 minutes later and be like, I just Googled where you are. I don't think this is gonna work out. And and like the flight path to get there is too long, or I don't understand how you're gonna find the talent in the place that you're in, or um, you're not near your customers, or like against all odds, we've really gotten to where we are. And so now what this capital means for Vendasta, for Saskatoon, for the prairies, for our province as a whole is investing in a create a creative economy and an innovation economy in that um you know the technology sector isn't a sector like i 
it's not a sector. Technology is in every sector. And if we can bring brilliant people into our organization from backgrounds like finance or the automotive industry or agriculture that can bring ideas to that and somehow cross pollinate them with this idea of technology and business practices um, that are really just a different way of going to market and then seed them back into the greater community to infuse all of our community with a different way of thinking. I guess that's that's mm -hmm. kind of what this investment means. So I, I you got a new building and so you got to go buy some got to go to garage sales and go find some furniture. Um, <laughs> but uh, but you yeah, are hiring for some, yeah. <laughs> you are hiring some new people. And so when they were talking about oh how are we going to find the talent and and you're not close to us as customers. Um, are you looking to expand? And maybe I'm like naive, like you're already you're out there and you have people that are planted. Because uh, you do have a big customer base in the States. Yeah. So do you have like people that are then just employees that are right there planted? Yeah, so I guess to, to walk through the exact use of proceeds, yeah. So uh, we're growing our sales and marketing team and customer success team um, quite a bit. So. Anyone with customer service experience, that's my shameless plug right now. But really, it's its a lot of people are like, I shouldn't apply because I'm not from a tech background. Guess what? A lot of the jobs that we're, we're hiring right now aren't engineering and technical jobs anymore. They are, do you understand customers? Do you understand marketing? Do you understand sales? Awesome, we want you on our team because that's the life cycle of Invest is at right now. So probably, I would say, and I have to look, CapEx, we're just going through our budgets today, but about 80% of the investment is going to be spent on people, on hiring people. And not all those people are going to be highly technical roles. It's really just roles that want to grow and, and deliver on the product that we've already built. Um, a lot of it is, is going to be investing in our international clients as well. And so um, some of our teams are expanding into, we've got a large client out of South Africa right now, the Czech Republic. Um, we've got four roles for, um, Asia Pacific and Australian hires as well, just to support that kind of ecosystem. So um, the second would be expanding globally and, and um, you know, expanding into our current customer base. So people with great account management experience. But yeah, aside from the new building, it's really just people to fill it up. Yeah, well, I'm in for Hawaii if there's a place in Hawaii. Right? Yeah, all right, let's talk. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a few customers? I can do that. <laughs> Okay, well, let's jump over to Collapse because we did mention, uh, like last a month, we did have Jordan and Lisa that were speaking about Collabs and how you sit on that board. And um, and they were telling us about their personal professional journey um, and how Collabs came to be and the what and the why of its existence. So looking back when you just started out as a young entrepreneur, and it's I, it's I find it very interesting about tech is not a sector. It's like it's infiltrated in every sort of industry. I kind of got a little bit of like the light bulb when it went on when I was uh, when I was hearing them speak of some of the startups and mm -hmm. some of the examples. So again, when you go back, um, you know, and you didn't have collabs around to help you when you were starting up, we know that the road to success is always not smooth. Uh, but what are some lessons you've learned that you can share with us today for some of those who are just starting out or want to start out? Um, don't scare them too badly, but give us some good, <laughs> the bad, and maybe some ugly if you like. Oh man, this is, uh, where to begin? In each one of the chapters, it's, it's really changed. I think, um, the first one, you know, even at Vendasa, something that we often lose sight of is our customers. And at the end of the day, I think Keaton Shaw from Crazy Egg had a great quote. It's not the one who solves um, the problem, you know, the best, it's the one that keeps understanding what the problem is. And, and really recognizing what your customers are asking for and setting up an infrastructure within your organization to constantly be monitoring that feedback, whether it's through you know, consumer reviews or how did you hear about us or getting your finger on the pulse of why your customers are coming to you, what needs are they trying to solve when they get to you, how are you solving those problems and then how are you taking your successful customers and fueling them to the rest of the organization. It sounds so simple, but for for a company as complex, as a complex story like Vendasta, we often trip and fall um, on telling our story and how do we attract new customers and what we found is that the customers that have seen success with Vendasta tell a better story than we could ever imagine. And so I guess um, one lesson would be never lose sight of what you're doing because 
your customers change and their problems change faster than any organization can keep up with. Um, two would be, it's, this sounds really trivial, but um, have a great partner. <laughs> I don't know how many, whatever, everyone's in a different situation, but um, I'm a partner jerk. Partner support system, right? But partner or support system, family, friends, anything is like, you're gonna see some very dark, especially with Triumph when I was living in Toronto and you know, you don't, we were, bootstrapping we had no money we i was i was bixie biking to venture capitalist meetings in these tall towers and like okay dry off the sweat before you go <laughs> and talk to these venture capitalists like take wait, the wait, runners off put the shoes oh, high heels on yes exactly oh crap forgot the shoes just wear this on yeah it was uh but but you need someone to be your cheerleader and prop you up and unless you're just very incredible propping yourself up and like all the power to you but just recognize that there are going to be very dark days and you're going to be on this roller coaster that and if you if you quit when it's low the first time you don't recognize how strong you are and until you've really done it a few times you you understand what's a speed bump and what's what's the end and you have to figure out how to bounce back from that and learn from it and never just ignore what happened, but figure out how you can gap the speed bump next time. I like that. No, I never thought of it that way. Like if you just quit when you're there and you don't understand how to get out of it. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure everyone here has a story of we didn't get the check in time and therefore we had to let, like, you have to talk to your staff about, hey, we're not going to make payroll. It's not the end of the company. It's like, do you mind taking a leave? Or, you know, our CFO has a great story of how they just simply didn't have enough money coming in the bank and they had to go to the staff of, at that time, like over 100 people and say, we've got two options. Either we let 20% of people go or we take a 20% reduction in pay until we have enough cash flow to bring it back up. And the whole staff unanimously said, let's take a reduction in pay rather than letting go a few people. And they were able to pay back and then some um, as a bonus to thank the staff, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, jumping back to when we talked about when you were going through this $40 million uh, process of, of um, and then as well, you were had a new baby. So we kind of skipped over that part a little bit about the balance and how do you how do you you know deal with the pressures of writing these grants and and dealing with having to redesign and restructure and a new you know when you have when you just had a new baby yeah um, and you talked about your partner that's why I kind of went oh yeah that reminds me we didn't get to yeah, that yeah you have a baby and a child yeah it's uh um it was not easy it definitely was not easy and it was um it, it's crazy because when I when I was younger um, you know, what do you want to be when you grew up? And it was like, my answer was a mom. That's all I wanted to be. And then all of a sudden I had this kid and, um, beautiful baby changed our entire world. But I had this job that I was also in love with. And there were a few days, you know, for, for those of you who've had kids that like, oh my God, the hormones, <laughs> like you're just a nightmare and you're just, you're on your right mind. But First, I was really hard on myself and mom guilt was real and the chemicals were whatever and I, I resented my job and I felt guilty about my child and then I probably had a light bulb moment with one of my girlfriends who shook me out of it and said, how lucky are you to have a healthy child and a job that you love and want to come back to? Like just flipping <laughs> perspective on its head and recognizing that it's not woe is me but like wow, you know, you're so lucky. So I think... Um, you know what what the fundraise looked like was when i was um you know i was i was pregnant i took leave everything was smooth and all of a sudden um right near when i had lex he uh we decided we wanted to raise capital and it was sort of a and my my boss brendan was really good about it he said you know you come back when you're ready you you deserve to take all the time in the world or whatever um but if you want to come back, <laughs> here is, here's kind of something we're doing. And of course, like, oh, crap, that looks really fun. Um, and so 
a lot of the fundraise was a road show. And so I went to investor meetings and God bless my mom, she was able to come when Lex was really young and I was booking investor meetings two hours of the 30 minute time window you know, so I could go down and go up to the hotel room and this conference and like breastfeed my child. So I had to like time all the investor meetings and like, <laughs> like, like, oh, let's vote for wine. I'm like, I'd love to, but, oh, crap. you know, like, um, so it was now I'll look back on it and it's kind of a wild west adventure, but I don't think I was really in sound mind at the time and just went, <laughs> went with it anyways. And here we are, you know, <laughs> well, it worked, whatever it was working it for worked, you. Yeah. So lastly, I have a question. Um, again, um, yeah, five years ago, just graduating, starting a new business, uh, crashing all the parties. Um, <laughs> again, but during that time, so many accomplishments to date. As I mentioned, the CBC, Saskatchewan Future 40 Under 40, YWCA Women of Distinction. Again, you're on this Canadian watch list for women in tech. Uh, I mean, this is incredible stuff. And I can't imagine how proud your parents are. I mentioned them, and I know Bill and Diana. It's like I do see their Facebook posts and I you know, want to receive Bill and they so I can't imagine because they do they are proud of you and brag about you but you mentioned a little bit about a support system so how is important in family and how have they guided you I mean your dad's an entrepreneur as well right and so what have you learned from from your family in regards to this journey oh man um I think that the the craziest thing um you know when in just life and business in general is is as much as your family wants you to progress and to to grow and whatnot at the end of the day it's it's almost like the safe place you land it's not really them propelling me forward it's them being there when i need a break or when i need someone to watch lex or whatnot and that i think has it's it's not so much what they teach me as it relates to business but rather having that safety net at the back allows me to kind of be more confident in what I'm trying um, and take. And at, at the end of the day, like being the best grandparents has been the thing that has paid dividends from a family and a support network. And um, I think it, it's important to just recognize that um, everyone, if you find the right support network, those that truly value they value you more than what, what you're doing. And so I, I really appreciate it. I was telling my girlfriends at work that this weekend um, I had to go, we, every year we go to town with my girlfriends and we just, um, you know, don't talk about work. Don't talk about anything. It's a time to be kind of human up at the lake and there's a lot of snow and we pour hot toddies and we walk around and we just like that, that human element allows, um, it's more valuable than any type of, business or mentorship or advice because at the end of the day I think everyone's just human and wants to be around people and have a good life. Yeah. Well with that being said this concludes my part of the questioning but I do open it up to anybody in the audience that have any questions for Jackie, Jackie C. Is there any questions out there? Anyone have? Uh, we have uh, Allison. Yeah, we were wooed like crazy and all of a sudden people see dollar signs and they come out of the woodwork and for the first few days it was like shut off every inbox because everyone was like we'll give you free rent we'll give you we'll pay your first wages new brunswick had a very aggressive program um at the end of the day it, uh, there's something about um especially with brendan and our entire executive team i think we have something to prove in saskatchewan that chip on our shoulder to say all of the people that Googled us and said, yeah, you're never gonna make it because you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, I think maybe that's what's fueling it more than anything <laughs> economically or from a business perspective. Or yeah, it, it's crazy how um, before when we were going to the conferences, I mean, we sit on Google's Cloud Advisory Council. We're in, um, we're, like Vendasta is, now it's known in Saskatoon, but two years ago, I would walk into events and you're like, you're from what? Is that a spaceship organization? Like, I don't even know what you're saying. Are you speaking English? Like it was a very obscure concept, right? Um, but now I think 
you know, it's it, being from Saskatchewan, it has proven to be a, a huge asset for us um, because in the recruitment stage, when we're bringing in people from recently, we brought in a ton of Brazilians, Australians, someone from Bosnia, like they look at Saskatchewan. Um, we were getting really prepared to sell them on like, hey, the winters aren't so bad. And there's like, we're not really in the middle of nowhere. And if you drop a pin, it's only well, six hours. Like, it's beautiful here. Yeah. But it was quite the opposite. They were like, no, I've done my research and I'm really excited to live in a safe place with good health care, with a safe school and education that my kids can grow up with and a job that I can afford to not be house poor and drive two hours each way to work. Mm-hmm. And we were like, yeah. That's right. (laughs) So it's a it's an asset now. It was a curse before, but it's cool. It's come around. Yeah. Well, and Vendesta also. Sorry. Um. I mean, yes. They're. I wouldn't say two years, but we've heard them. We've heard them for a a number of years. They've been getting lots of great awards with the Greater Saskatoon Chamber of Commerce, with the NSBA, with the Saskatchewan Chamber. So you guys are doing some great things in regards to customer service and growth. (laughs) So yeah, you definitely have have made a mark and I know that people that have worked for you and listened to them talk about how fun it is. You guys have some great events that you put on for the general public to come and also have some growth opportunities as well. So no, you're doing some great things here in our, our city and our province. So yes, thanks for staying with us. Okay. New Brunswick is like nowhere as well. No, no, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Allison, you were gonna well, I, continue? I just correct me if I'm wrong, but I read that you're looking your forecasting is hiring additional three hundred people. So is that your biggest challenge? Oh, yes. Yep. 100%. People. Finding people. So it all ranges. Like, having a university here has definitely got to be key, right? Because your your people are coming through the hiring process. But you're, you're, when you were talking about customer service, so it's the whole gambit, hey? It's across the board, yeah. And I I think uh, as a perception, again, it's like, you're a tech company unless you code, then NASA doesn't want you. And it's like, no, not, not, I mean, Lori, is you're here somewhere, but like, you know, she, was, she used to work, Bonifer used to work at Vendessa. They, they're just, they brought with them a wealth of experience from a diverse background that are a huge asset that they don't code, but not everyone needs to code to work there because we need a ton of people across okay, the Because I don't know what code means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, Deb. So if I get that, if some of you didn't hear that, you have, you, 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 I wouldn't say a mandate, but you've, all, you've said you're going to hire 250, 300 employees. Do you have a mandate? Do you have something that you're looking at in regards to, um, is there a percentage of females that may be considered to fulfill some of these positions? Right, Deb? Is that yeah, kind of a gist? There's a lot of talent. Like, yeah. I mean, and I'm not saying that you're male or female, but I mean, obviously, there's a lot of opportunity for women to dive into something that you're going to be allowing that growth and, and, and that opportunity for these people to explore and move to those next levels, right? So I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of women that will be part of that growth as well. Because I mean, my kids, right? Yeah, you're 100% right. Yeah, in Vendasta was traditionally pretty balanced um, in the earlier days because it was heavy, heavy on R&D, research and development coders, developers, computer science, all kind of words we use. Yeah. But so as much, we our benchmark when we were very hard, heavy on R&D was to outperform the graduating class. So basically whatever the percentage of the graduating class, which is often like 12 to 15%, was could we get higher than that on a pro, you know, a per cap. Now that we're transitioning into more sales, more marketing, more customer success, product management, data, intelligence, those types of roles, um, marketing services roles, those are gender agnostic. And so what we've seen is, and especially, like, of course, I'm a little biased, but I have some really fantastic leaders in my organization that are females um, in roles that they're, I would say, I, I hate, I, I, like, I'm, 
I'm super glad men are here and as allies and I, but in these specific roles, I think it's an advantage to be a woman. And a lot of those skill sets are around customer empathy. They feel what our customers are feeling. Um, they, they're a little bit more analytical and reserved versus, you know, taking bolder next steps and whatnot. So, um, at Vanessa, we don't have a DNI strategy that is very rigid diversity and inclusion. We recognize that diversity is an asset to the business and we try to hire completely blind when it comes to gender, race, religion, sexual orientation. And as a result, and I invite anyone to come to our ideas on tap or come by on a beer on Friday, we have an incredibly diverse, incredibly diverse from culture to language to you walk through and it's like, where am I? <laughs> it's a totally different world than them. Um, so yes, diversity is a, it's a huge thing and it just naturally I think the company is going to have organic in your company. an organic gender balance. Yeah. Lori. Hi. Um, my question. So I love this whole thing that you're talking about work-life balance because it is what you want it to be and what you make it to be. And I know I've been a workaholic in the past where my work-life balance was more work and less family because they were independent. Anyway, with your you didn't like them. Oh, no, <laughs> That's what you said. I didn't like my oh, kids. No. Anyway. Now I do. Now I'm home all the time. Like, oh. But anyway, um, with your work life balance, I know that a lot of things that you do is also uh, mentoring other women in tech and uh, some women who are growing their businesses in tech who I've talked to who say great things about the support you've given them. Uh, so, A, what does your work life balance kind of look like? And what are you doing to help sort of elevate those women in tech? And not that it's like greatly diverse anymore, but what are you doing to help the women in tech? Yeah, yeah. Um, something that I, I guess, like after Lex was born, something that went out the window was this idea of balance. And I think I, what balance become was just being okay with failing at everything. And it's not a super fun way to describe it, but I think it was just a tolerance that you don't need to be in box zen. You don't need to have every social activity fill up your calendar. You don't need to get, you start to say no to a lot more things, but be intentional about it and like, and be okay with it. That, that was something I really struggled with was um, just failing my family, failing my partner, failing my child, failing my work, failing my end constantly. And you just have to really set boundaries. So one of the boundaries that I've set at work is I don't get to the office before 8 a.m. And poor Carly, like other people book meetings and it's just like, that's a non-negotiable because I want to see my kid when he wakes up and I'm home at 5 p.m. And I log back on from eight until you know 11 at night or whatever, but those are non-negotiables. Um, so it's just like being okay with saying no to things. And the other thing is like having worlds collide. So one of the things with mentorship, I used to really compartmentalize my life. This is my social life. This is my work life. This is my family life. Um, when you don't have enough time for all of those silos to operate independently, harmoniously, you start to try to find ways to have, okay, well, I need to mentor someone, but I also want to find time with my kid. Let's go on a walk and we can talk. <laughs> and now I'm, you know, like I remember Alicia from Salon Scale. She was one of the first, and my husband, you know, mentors her a lot more than, than I do. Um, but he was like, hey, Alicia's coming over. I invited her over for brunch. This was like maybe three weeks postpartum. <laughs> You're still a wreck at that point. I'm like, great, this is, this is not, so you find ways to just like, Combine everything. Go get your hand cut with her. Yeah, I, I know. I, sh I should have. There you go. Yeah, I just went and let it grow back for a while. Uh, yeah, anyways, it was, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know, and I was open it up to anyone else. Like, I'm learning, too, from the people in, and not just moms, but in, you know, career women or people who have chosen different paths. Like, how, how do you, I think it's just as much about being okay with the decisions you're making than actually the decisions that you make. That makes sense. I, I like that question, Lori. I think we've asked it a number of times to everyone who's up here because it's always almost a different answer. Oh, God. And what did everyone else say? No, and, no <laughs> there's no right or wrong. I think I don't oh, think there's a right or wrong. Everyone's different. 
and how they handle this balance. And there is no such thing as a balance is what I've heard. And I believe that too. So it's, I, you know, again, every time you, like you just said something about, you know, like fit, fit things together or have some, like, these are like my boundaries. These are no's for me. And, and I know Rachel mentioned something about like, or I think it was Rachel that was saying like, when you're in the moment mm -hmm. and like today is all about, I'm going to not feel guilty because I'm going to be doing this all day. And then tomorrow it's all about family and so yeah. it's just and make sure that you're in that moment and so like, like i really like that question with when it, when we come to um a different speaker every month because because you can just learn a little bit from it and it ac actually helps me feel better about how <laughs> out of control i am <laughs> when we're here drinking wine we're here drinking well that's wine. that's that's so part of the balance right now yeah. if, I had, two, if I had two i'd be more balanced actually <laughs> This, this person is going to lead this and this and this. I don't know how because he's in a different division of the company, but he messaged me and he said, pretty cool to see that immediately your, your gender parity is equal. And I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't even know that. I didn't intentionally do that. The leadership in the org and the ratios and whatnot just happened to be 50-50. And then he said, that's what I love about you is you don't think about it and it just happens. And... So I think maybe one of my faults is that I don't think about it and I am blind to some of that sometimes and I focus too much on, on merit. Um, and the person that deserves to be in the role should just be in the role, point blank. Whether they're male, they're female, they're not binary, it's just like they deserve to be in that role. But at, at the same time, I think if we don't start to be allies towards others, um, then they're never going to be able to see themselves in that role either. So I've, I've been trying to make a, a conscious decision of recognizing the quieter voices, whether they're male or female, maybe I need to put more of a, of a focus on gender, but really trying to silence the loudest voices in the room to allow room and space for all voices to speak, because I don't think it's necessarily a gender conversation. Sometimes we just physically, you've heard me probably like argue in the boardroom. I'm just this shrill, Carly can attest to it every morning. I'm like, ah, yeah, we have 
so you know like that my voice doesn't carry as well as Dale's or as Brendan's or as George's right um so it's a different tactic but I I think it's more about creating space for people to feel safe to give an opinion and to be recognized not so much about um dampening others I don't know and it's a good answer and it's fine to say Right there, you are the lucky one. Yes, go ahead, ask your question. Um, Who are you? Okay. You're new. I haven't I seen you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Masha, and um, I have run here with me a group of um, immigrant women who are trying to open our own businesses. So we're in school with Praxis, yes. with, uh, with Monica, yeah. Saskatoon Open Door Society, women's business hub, and stuff like that. So. Um, Jackie, as somebody who's had the opportunity to go to other countries outside Canada in different continents and um, at a business level and whatever level it was, um, like what advice or what can we as immigrant women who are super talented, and I'm not lying about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can brag, bring all you want. <laughs> trying to make a life in Canada, but at the same time trying to break into the business um, environment. Like, what is the, the key to overcoming um, whatever we come across? The fact that we have already made the sacrifice to leave our uh, own countries to come and start a new life here, but we are finding it difficult to just like get in there and, and be out there and shine like you. But first of all, I want you to know that you have done something harder than 99% of people around you have done. So I got that working for you. Second of all, by being here today, and actually stand back up. Tell everyone what you're doing. What's your business? Because this is like shameless plug. This is your podium. Yeah. Okay, so I'm into making homemade meals with an Afro-Caribbean touch. My target market is the business women, not business women, busy women. And <laughs> who like wholesome foods but don't have time to cook for their kids. So that's what I am I am there for. And if it's okay, I'll just give Brian here. Please, yeah, I got one customer right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Hi, I'm Rania. <laughs> um, my business is um, cake decorating. And Yeah, good point, Jackie. Like, the first step is coming to things like this, and it's a it's a safe environment, and it's a warm environment, and it's an environment where you can definitely network within the business community. So, like you said, you've already done a huge step that's brave uh, by being here, as well as just coming to events like this. But give them some more words of wisdom. Well, because I'm a little biased, I've also said, how does your digital marketing strategy look? Because <laughs> um, if you don't have one, let's talk. And, and maybe I can be a customer, and then I can help guide you on how to how to create and find more customers as well. Because I think a lot of, uh, if you don't have a very strong and wide network right now, there's a way to create one um, digitally and online if you do a good job at providing your service or your product, right? Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, network find people find customers even if it maybe means giving away a free meal every like i'll pay don't worry but but find great champions to create new great champions and advocates so that you you can grow um you know virally and through through network and whatnot but let's chat after yeah. i'd love to learn and i will say wes like seriously yes. there is some yes. phenomenal i just went to the marketing madness thing was it last friday i can't remember if it was last friday but it was a friday before um and I went on a full day and I learned so much and I've been doing this for a long time and I've gone to a lot of courses and whatever and it's just like like you said things are changing so fast especially in the digital world I was like oh I gotta add more emojis to my posts I didn't know that <laughs> all right uh, like they're like seriously so West has some great stuff uh, it's very sometimes it's free sometimes a little bit of money but being a member a lot of things are free 
great advice over here. So definitely look into WESC and stop in and just find out what they can do and help you as well. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm glad that you got the last question, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that you don't have to stop asking questions after the fact. So stick around, ask each other questions. You can ask Jackie questions. Uh, me, just ask me some really easy questions if you want <laughs> after the fact. But with that being said, thank you very much for coming out and everyone give a warm round of applause. <laughs>